If I tell you that I am obese, I will show you that why I am obese. Now, obesity is one of the three top global social burdens generated by human beings. There are a lot of diseases which is not generated, but these are the diseases generated by the smoking, the terrorism, and armed force violence, and the next is the obesity. And it costs a lot. It costs a lot. It's about two trillion each year. But unfortunately, in most of the countries, it is not covered by the medical insurance. If you want to cover yourself with the medical insurance, you will have to have a comorbidity. And that's what in USA does, that diabetes with obesity they will give. Then you will be covered with insurance. But rules are coming that obesity is itself a disease and it has to be covered uh, from the insurance point of view. And as you can see that the way it is rising. If you see the Indian figures, Indian figures are not that bad yet. 56% of the adults are obese, 36% are thin, and 12.5% are obese. But India is also progressing, so it is expected that the Indians will be obese in future. What I have seen in UK is that the top class people are not really fat. It is the lower class people who has got plenty of beer to drink because of the social security and no work to work, so they become obese. The food is considered to be a sign of prosperity. If you go to a marriages of a rich person, you will get 30 items, 40 items, and in a poor people, it is not. So we want to show our prosperity by taking more foods, and that's the reason we'll have a future which will be like Western countries. Now, the pediatrician has got a lot of roles to, in this one, they will have to answer the parents' concern and why the, my child is obese. They will also have to look for the comorbidities, which are plenty, we'll have to look for it. You will have to guide them, support colleagues who are providing the lifestyle advice. And also, I, being a pediatrician with a little bit of interest in dysmorphology, I see a lot of obese children who are dysmorphic and who are genetic obesities. And the reports is really horrible that it is a preventable death, uh, cause of death. But what's the special problem of obesity in Indians? The Indians has got more chances of atherogenic dyslipidemia, coronary artery disease, diabetes. The only advantage that we have little bit is that in Indians has got little less hypertension. But what we have enough is enough to kill us. So you don't need to bother much about hypertension. And then we have the grandparents. Now this is a country where the senior people runs the country. Till we have a prime minister of 45 years age, or if I ch change it, that till we have a prime minister of reproductive age, when your brain functions the best, the country will not progress. Because the ideas become fixed. Now, you might say that, how did you learn this? Why did you say this? You look at the corporate sector. The moment you are 55, most probably you'll be out most of the time. So brain works best between 45 to 55 when your reproduction system also works best. Now, the problem with this, when a child is obese, the grandparents say, oh, it will be all right as he grows, which is not true. As you can see from these figures, that 90% uh, of the chance that he's an obese as an adolescent. Now, the current drivers for the obesity epidemics are portion distortion. What is this portion distortion business is? Look at this. In 1957, this burger was of this size and contains 210 calories. And now, to catch the market, it's 618 calories. So you can well know that you get the chips packet. Now bigger and bigger chips packet are coming. So it contains more calories. So this is portion distortion that you can have. And then 
On top of that is the celebrity endorsement. The celebrities are getting fatter in money, but they are keeping themselves thin because they know that they will have to keep their th uh, keep themselves thin to keep their celebrity positions. But what the children are doing, the children are learning from that, and then they are trying to have those. I'm not mentioning the names of the celebrities because of the restrictions. And the use of cars has decreased, uh, increased. Let's see how the cars has increased. See, previously, uh, the number of people or the boys carrying the car was this. When I used to go to school, I used to go through the railway lines. And you know those sleepers. And those sleepers, I used to take a step. So that was a good exercise for me, going to school and coming to school, and that too quickly, because I will have to jump every sleeper. Now, my children used to go by car. So that's one thing, that the bus has decreased, the public transport has also decreased, walking and biking has also decreased. So that's again a problem. And then, you all know, I'm not going to talk about this, that the TV viewing has increased. How do you classify the obesity? The previous classification was that if your BMI is between 85 to 95, you are at risk of obesity. So that means you are not yet obese, but you are at risk. But the recent classification has been changed, and this is changed for the betterment of the uh, children, is that you are not at risk, you are already overweight. And when it is more than 95, it is an obesity. In a recent study from the computer, computers of the Western country, America, they have seen that 70% of the obese children were not declared obese because of the BMI chart was not done. And that too, 30% of the morbid obesity was not mentioned in their prescription that they are uh, obese. Now, whether this is due to not to have the, uh, to get the insurance, or that's true, but the figures are like that, that the, because we don't do the BMI chart, we do not know who, who is obese and who is not. Now, BMI chart is important because you see this 10-year boy at the 23 uh, BMI will be normal at this age, but will be obese at this age. So you need to do a BMI chart, and that's again very much lacking. And that's again, we are not warning the parents that your child is obese. But problem with BMI is that the thinner doesn't mean that uh, you are not obese. That doesn't mean that you are not having a increased BMI. So that's what I am. I am thin, but I have got more fat. The weighing scale cannot differentiate between these two, muscle or the fat. And the best example is the individual who develops lean mass, muscle mass. After exercise, he converts his fat into muscle, but still his BMI will be high. Now, this is what is the problem now, is that the normal weight obesity. This is, sounds like an oxymoron. He's awfully beautiful. Something like that. It's two opposite terms. But the normal weight obesity is again a problem which I am like that my weight is okay, but my central part is slightly more. And if you do the other measurements, which I will show you, you will see that my weight is more. So that's more dangerous. And that's the reason I'm having diabetes. That's the reason I'm having a lot of complications. So. This is a group which is being neglected and that needs to be uh, taken care of. And you all know this, that the Indians has got more fat, whereas the Western country people has got more muscle mass. You can estimate the obesity by a lot of um, uh, techniques. One of these is the BMI, which I have already told you. Weight for height, we usually do before the two years of age, because of BMI cannot be done before two years of age. So that's where the weight for height. For example, you know, uh, exam, you know that the skin fold thickness, waist circumference, waist hip ratio, and others. And there are a lot of uh, biotechnical methods of 
waiting. One of these is DEXA on which we will be working very soon in one of the projects and then underwater uh, weighing a lot of others I am not going into. The, then the ultrasound can give you a lot of good idea about how much fat you have. Coming to the etiological factors for obesity, it is a complex one. It is a gene, definitely is gene. It is a monogenic syndrome where the gene plays the more main role. Then you have the susceptibility genes or the thrifty genes and then is your metabolic rate, is your exercise, how much exercise you are doing, food intake, culture and environmental factors. So obesity is the interplay of all these factors, is only diet doesn't. Because many a times when you s tell the parents that your child seems to be obese, the, the parents will say, no doctor, he doesn't take. And that might be true, maybe he is having an obesity gene. but may not be the monogenic obesity, which I will talk about a little bit, that what are monogenic obesities, but maybe they are having thrifty genes or other polygenic obesities.